Hello. Good morning, everybody. I'm going to open up in prayer. Father God, we love you, Lord. Thank you for this beautiful day, Lord. And we ask you, Father God, to take us completely out, Lord, that it is all about you in this service today. We give you all the praise and all the glory and everything that's done, Lord. We love you so much. And Father God, we lift up all the people that are traveling today. And we lift up all the people that are sick. Father God, we lift up our beautiful country, the president and our government. And we lift up our beautiful town, Passion Play, and the churches, Lord. And we just love you so much, Father God. We praise your holy name. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 Well, am I on? Well, I'm the sound man. Yeah, I was going to say I didn't check my mic over there either, so... Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so I just want to um, remind everybody to please keep each other in prayers. This is a uh, flu season and colds are going around and all that stuff. So you notice that we got a lot of empty seats. So please keep all those people that you know that are normally here on Sundays in prayer, please. So this week, um, not as busy as we have been, which is so that's a good thing, right? Yeah. So this week we had 420 people through the food pantry. That was 134 families. And then um, through the buffet was 440 meals. Because we're going to be closed this next week, I went ahead and did this month uh, numbers. So um, 200, no, 2,127 people wow. through the food bank so far this month and then uh 702 families so the buffet was 1861 meals through the buffet so and the reason why it wasn't so high we were closed thursday yes. now i hope you guys all had a good time yes. and ate turkey yes. and but well, we had time. turkey dinner here all week long yes we got turkeyed out, Turkeyed man. out, that's right. So, reminder, we will be closed next week. Chuck and I are doing a little vacay, and all our volunteers taking some time yeah. off. Enjoy that time. Good. We will. And then we will be back and ready for next Sunday. So, we'll see you guys all yeah, Sunday next week. Next week. Hopefully, we'll be recouped and... We not, will be. not too tired <laughs> of the trip. So. Um, a reminder, Christmas party is December 10th. It's a Saturday from 4 to 7 p.m. It is potluck style. We will provide main, meats, yeah, yeah. main sides. Um, it is bring a side dish or a dessert of your choice or both. And then um, we will have a gift exchange. Uh, guys bring you guys, girls bring girls. We will have for the um, kids um, a table that they have for themselves. Um, we're asking to do at least up to or you know around twenty dollar value for adults, ten for children. Get something you would like because you might end up with your own. Present. <laughs> That's what I always like. Get with something you like, and then ugly sweater contest. That will be the prizes. For the that would be the only thing for prizes. And then we are going to decorate a tree for the church. Um, so I'm asking if you'd bring um, either a homemade. Um, ornament or something that you purchase, whichever you would like to do to represent your family, and then we'll put it on a tree and it'll be fine. And then we'll just have time to visit and um, We're have a good fellowship time, time and I'm eat. Not going to do that eat, dirty yeah, Santa. Eat. That took like four and a half yeah, hours. We're going to do something a little different. So um, <laughs> yeah, it hopefully fun. it won't take as long. It was fun, <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> but um, we um, are going to play some praise and like worship. So you're going to see me running. <laughs> back and forth and all that and today we uh is testimony day for um and andy is going to give his testimony yes. so uh yeah. you guys um feel free to praise god how you want just be respectful in the house of the lord and just uh i love y'all god bless you i'll be back How's Loud. It's too loud. 
Lord. That's okay.
shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing.
better than you, Lord, is nothing. Nothing is better than you. Too. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Andy Yang's going to give his testimony. I'll be right back. Yay, Andy! So that song, it really spoke to me here, especially with the testimony here. Like I said, man, we are a bunch of screw ups. And, uh, <laughs> It's okay. I am totally, totally okay. I have kids too. <laughs> um, I have a bunch of them. <laughs> well, uh, a lot of you have seen me uh, grow to be the person that I am today. And I am so, so blessed. Uh, beyond words. Uh, yes, of course, we have our hardships. Yes, of course, the valleys and stuff like that. Even with this relationship that I have with uh, my wife and my daughter, my daughters, I guess, too, as well. Here, you know, but uh, in uh, for me to talk about how I got to where I am, it, it's going to be hard because they, they have a image of me and how I am now, and, but they don't know who I was then. I talked to my daughter a little bit about it before here, but not too many people know uh, of the things that I've, my share of things, like how Chuck always talks about his past. Well, I got my past too as well. And, uh, but my beliefs at the beginning, uh, as we talked about the past couple of weeks, I grew up in the shaman world. And uh, Christianity wasn't a part of our family function at all here. Um, my beliefs then were like, if I did good in life, that's enough. You know, uh, now knowing better, it's not enough. You know, you have to know, it has to be more than just that here. Um, uh, I was born in France, came to the States here in 1986, January the 3rd. Um, we lived, moved to Columbus, Ohio, lived there for about under a year. And then uh, me not knowing my native tongue and not knowing any English, my dad decided to move us to Detroit, right in the heart of the ghetto of Detroit. My wife's seen pictures when we went there recently here. It is still ghetto. <laughs> uh, worse, actually, in fact, here, because my house is not that we had. It's not sitting there anymore, but the house that we had then. Um, it was tough. 
you're a minority living with the minority group. I got beat up by girls. You know, I'm a short little Asian shrimp here, and I remember like uh, in middle school it was six, seven, eight for us then. Uh, and the uh, sixth graders went up against the eighth graders, and we got these tall, they, they just started puberty, and I'm like, I haven't started yet, they're throwing dodgeballs at me and knocking me around here. And uh, it was tough. And then uh, we, we walked to school, because our kids, they get the bus, they don't know how hard it is to walk in like three feet of snow to go to school, because we still had school, even with three feet of snow. And, it, it was about a mile and a half walk from my house to my middle school. I always get beat up for my shoes. So I, got, I learned to appreciate, you know, payless shoes. You know, I had Sprint. I didn't have Nikes, you know. I didn't have the starter jackets back then. At least that was what I was going for. We grew up poor. Um, um, I'm not saying this to to ask for anything at all, but my birthday lands on December 24th. I remember... <laughs> having my left sock for Christmas and my right sock for Christmas here. And I was happy about that. You know, some people complain like, well, that sucks. Like, no, I got warm socks to, work, to walk to school. I was happy with that here. But uh, growing up poor, unfortunately for me, and in hindsight looking at it here, it led to the desires of the material world. So I was a go-getter. I did everything I needed. I wanted this, I went for it. Uh, I made it about what I wanted, and uh, the whole New Age thing here, self-manifest. Like, I can do this. If I keep telling myself in the mirror, I want this, I will get it here. Where at these days is, if God wills it, God will make it happen here. And I, that I just learned in the past two years, actually. And uh, I'm 44 going 45, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Almost four decades I realized that here. Uh, but uh, just kind of eventually it led to my first marriage and my first encounter with uh, Christ, uh, where I felt I it felt my, uh, my first encounter with Christ here. First of all, I've been married. This is my third marriage. With, uh, Ju uh, with Judy's my third and blast that's correct uh, uh, some of you may have met my second one before here as well here and uh, so you see me grow to where I am and uh, it's, it's great because you guys see it you know I'm not just telling you a story here but my first marriage it was with my uh, my first wife her name was Vilai it lasted about seven years and that lifestyle again the go-getter uh, go-getter lifestyle. Uh, I was doing, I had a living, uh, keeping up with the Jones lifestyle. I live in a nice cul-de-sac of the suburbs of Minnesota. Uh, I had a 2,500 square foot house, three car garage, four bedrooms, two and a half baths, etc., etc. I, I did have that, uh, but I worked my butt off for it here. I was telling John that I worked uh, in a period of two weeks I had one day off. Um, and because that's the lifestyle I wanted. I worked, I was a general manager at first for uh, KFC. Uh, you guys will talk about going to Kentucky here, so I was like, oh yeah. yeah. Then uh, eventually, uh, I, my specialty was Japanese cuisine here. A lot of you guys know I have a restaurant here. And uh, I did the hibachi and the sushi and all that stuff there. Um, I had a good relationship with my wife then, her sister's husband's. So I called them my in-laws here, and so we had a really cool click going. Like every Sunday, we would watch the Vikings either lose. At the time, they lost a lot. And these days, they're looking pretty good, you know. Like, <laughs> but um, uh, out of that relationship, I had my two biological daughters, Gwendolyn and Chloe. Some of you have seen them here, who have been here for the past few years. Uh, as the ministry has been growing, I've been bringing them here as well from Minnesota. They stay with me during the summer when they can. Um, uh, for about two, three months of the year, but um, and uh, one of the first uh, feelings any parent can testify to this here uh, that I had was one day I get a call from work and then uh, uh, my uh, daughter had a seizure. My oldest, she was barely one, 
and you know you get all those immunization shots and stuff like that here me not knowing that I probably would have said no but um, she had a seizure and that's the worst feeling you can have there driving from work just crying you know, praying to God didn't believe in God before I just I had to pray to God for this one here just all the natural instinct here and just told her like you just take my life instead to, and give it to her you know I've lived my life and stuff like that here and it was ended up being just like uh, a fever a, a fever fever seizure what happened was that my wife uh, gave my uh, Gwendolyn the oldest she they gave her a cold bath when she had a fever to cool her down and that triggered the seizure those working in the metal field know about it here but it was nothing serious amen to that here uh, she's never had one before uh, that was the first time i ever prayed i prayed and it was a 30 minute drive to the hospital from there to there i prayed and then uh, that's uh, Sometimes I reflect on that even to this day, like how God sacrifices for us to do as well, you know, it's ultimate sacrifice. But that wasn't enough to, to catch my attention. Because uh, uh, our God is a God that uh, can give and take away. And for me at that time, he took everything away from me here. Um, I don't want to go into too much details as far as the details go, but the long story short was that the, uh, me and my wife at the time, we, I decided to separate because, uh, for reasons out for maybe another testimony here. But uh, during that time, uh, I, I lived with my sister in Minnesota, and that was the first time I experienced being homeless. Uh, what happened was that um, I got off of work on a Friday night and my sister went to go see her boyfriend over the weekend in Wisconsin, which was about a four-hour drive. And um, I worked at this the Japanese steakhouse. I was the head chef there. And uh, there was this locker room where we put all our stuff in the back here. And uh, my boss had his kids hanging around the room in there while he worked at the restaurant and stuff. I kind of understand how I, we do it these days here, I guess, here. But uh, his daughter was of the same age of my, as my daughter, and it, I just had a biased love for her in that sense here. And uh, one night, uh, that Friday, I went home, uh, and uh, it was around November, and uh, it was cold. Like, this is not cold. This is the summertime for Minnesota here. Uh, cold is up there, and um, I got off of work, it's a, about a 45 minute highway commute. If you guys know Minnesota, it's Highway 35. You guys know 35 to go through Dallas and all that stuff. But Highway 35 up there is on a 45 minute commute to get home. And I get home late at night. Uh, it was maybe around 11 o'clock here and I didn't have my keys and on my, on my keychain. And I was like, well, maybe I dropped it off. It fell in the parking lot at the restaurant. Called my boss up here and uh, he said he had the final keys in the locker and the parking lot, nothing like that here. And I didn't know what I was going to do. And that was the start of it all for me here. I mean, not only did God take away my house, my family, my, my wife, my daughters, my income. I, guess, I, I was like, all right, you know, if that's the worst of it, I can be too bad here. And, but on top of it, and it's, it's cold, you have no place to sleep, sleep in your car. I had $25 in my bank. I was telling you that my wife that last night here, when I was practicing this here, but 25 bucks and then like, what am I gonna do? So I was like, in my days that I effed it. I'm like, you know, I'm gonna get me a hotel room, I'm gonna get me a bath, and that night I did sleep all night and I had a, cursing session with God that night mm -hmm. and uh, it was rough I mean just laying I remember laying in the bathtub like like is this it you know, uh, this is why people want to commit suicide you know, they've lost it all I live you know and I just kept cursing at God you know I did all the right things I felt I did all the right things 
And I woke up that morning, I was like, you know what, all right, I'm just going to do it, be a screw up. So I went and went shopping, overdrafted my account by hundreds of dollars, I guess, because they put a limit, a 250 the limit on my spending overdraft. Bought some new shoes, and then went to work on Saturday. And then one of my coworkers went up to my boss's daughter, because we know she's naughty. Her name is Faye. And my coworker goes, Faye. Did you take Andy's keys, so on, so on, so forth, like that here? And she she denied it. So I went to go do my hibachi table, cooked it, and I came back and then my coworker gave me the keys. It's like, did Faye have it? And he goes, yeah, but I was like, oh, darn it. The reason why my heart dropped is because my boss, he's old school. He will whip, the, he will whip her like crazy. And I saw when I he when my coworker gave me the keys. I saw my boss's reaction. He was going to look for her around the restaurant, wherever she has. He was going to beat the crap out of her. And I I pulled him to the side, like, don't worry about the hotel, don't worry about anything here. Just don't beat her up. And uh, uh, I I I'm, I beg for her, I beg him not to beat the crap out of her, because he knows that I love her like my own daughter here. And that was my first true, I think, experience to truly forgive us, you know. And um, that was my, my first forgiving lesson here where I, I forgave the kid because I love her so much. Like how God does that mm -hmm. to us. He loves us so much. He forgives us no matter how much we screw up we are. And, but that was in the beginning of the forgiveness. Forgiveness never ends. Uh, but the next big one for me here was probably the most hardest part for me here because it would happen with my kids. And um, uh, while I was separated from my, from my family at the time, and I, it was my day to pick up the girls, and I, I said, Gwenny, I went to the house that, uh, that I, I lost, picked them up, and said, it's Daddy's Day, let's go to the mall, let's go hang out. And, uh, and Gwenny, the older of the two at the time, she was five, and Chloe was three. I said, Chloe, all right, Gwenny, Chloe, put on shoes, let's go. Let's go to the mall's daddy's day, you know. And Gwenny goes, I don't want to. And uh, at that time, my, my mother-in-law was uh, babysitting the kids. And I was like, well, what's wrong? It's daddy's day, you know, let's go to the mall. You know, you love the mall. And but he's like, well, I don't want to give me the attitude of a five-year-old kid here, you know. I was like, all right, whatever, you know. And I said, Chloe, let's go. And, you know, Chloe doesn't know any better. She goes, all right, well, I get to go hang out with Daddy. Let's go. So we pull out about, about three minutes, you know. Uh, Chloe gives the, the whimpering cry. And he goes, oh, I, I, I miss sister. She starts crying. So I said, all right, forget it. So I called my mother-in-law. I said, you know, tell Gwenny we're going to pick her up whether she likes it or not. And well, we just left because we were going to go to the mall. I was like, well, no wonder why she didn't want to go to the mall. She didn't want to go to the mall with me. She wanted to go to the mall with Grandma. So I'm like, okay, so I meet you guys at Maplewood Mall. If you guys know uh, Minnesota, the Twin Cities area, Maplewood is a suburb of northeast suburb of uh, St. Paul. We met at Maplewood Mall. And we met at the food court, little sister sees big sister, runs to her, hangs out, all happy to have a little playground at the food court. And we ate lunch, and there was like a little merry-go-round in the center of the mall. And I was like, Gwenny, let's go, uh, your si little sister wants to go to the merry-go-round, so why don't you go with me? And Gwenny goes, I don't want to go with you. And I was like, all right, I got it. At that point, I was like, I don't give a crap what you want, you know? <laughs> let's go. She's like, uh, what, what's, what, what's up with the attitude? And she goes, well, I don't want to go with you. And I was like, why don't you want to go with me? Because I, if I go with you, then grandma's going to leave me with you. And I don't want to be with you. And in the food court. And then that, that, the world just turned black and white. And to hear that from your own kids, it just hurts so much. To this day, apparently, it does. And my in-laws, they, they criticized me for not showing, being there enough for the kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
But that, that hurts. That still hurts. I gave the money, I gave some, like, a couple hundred for my mother-in-law. And I was like, don't you ever dare criticize me. Tell me that I don't love my kids, that I don't try. And I, did, I tried my very best to the point where I could. And when it couldn't get worse, right? So that November, I decided to, my mom decided to, hey, she was living in Cassville, Missouri here. I said, hey, you know what, I'll go open a restaurant in Eureka Springs here, and you have the history, you have the knowledge, why don't you come and help open that restaurant with us, and that's where we have Meili to this day. That was in December 3rd of 2009, and we've been thence, there since. And, uh, man, I use this incident, I tell the story to the girls every now and then, how, like, when the big sister gets on the little sister, I tell like, you, you can't do that. Because I was like, well, you, you can't beat up on your little sister. And your little sister doesn't know any better. And I would tell her the story of the mall incident, but using the king and his two princesses in that scenario. And she just busted down crying. She got it. She got who she knew who it was. And uh, I told her that, you know, just like how God always forgives us, another forgiveness lesson here, you know, you need to learn to forgive your, your little sister because your little sister didn't know better, just like how your dad knows that you didn't know better for what you said. We love you unconditionally, you know, real unconditional love. My move to Eureka Springs here was another ch chapter. You know, I thought it was the first time I ever experienced depression. Uh, I was an adulterer. I had relations with a married woman in town. Not one of my brightest moments in life. Uh, I just needed... I talked to my, Lord, my daughter last night about it here. I needed the company. I didn't care who it was. And then uh, about a week and a half into this relationship here, uh, I had to break it off. I just can't do it. And I don't know what came into me. And that's when I really decided that I needed to be baptized and change the course. So on December 24th of 2011, I went to the Kings River and found a pastor who was brave enough to baptize me at the Kings River in the cold. <laughs> And that was the start of my journey. Now, we talk about it all the time here. When you get baptized here, you're going to get attacked. And uh, the devil is going to attack you uh, big time. That next summer here, I had my daughters stay with us here at the restaurant here. And when they left me, I fell into a very bad depression. The routines, the drawings on the walls of the restaurant, I get to see this. And I just break down and cry. And I just didn't work for almost three months. I'd stay in my apartment, it was an apartment complex, it's right here by Onyx Cave Road, right there. And if you're on 62, you make your first left on Onyx Cave Road, there's an apartment complex on the right side there. I used to live in one of the studios there. It was cheap, 325 bucks a month then, I guess. And um, I, I, I got stuck in there in the dark and uh, fell into that depression. Um, that's a dangerous intersection, by the way. 62 and Onyx Cave Road, because when you make your left on 62, to make your left, you come to complete stop, which I did. And um, what happened was that I decided that day, during that time of depression, to just go and get me a pack of cigarettes from the Exxon gas station, which is the currently White Oak. And um, I came to that stop on 62 to make that left, and boom, this old pickup rear-ends me at full speed. Uh, around three o'clock here during the rush hour time, stuff like that here, if we had a rush hour. <laughs> but uh, you could see the incoming curve, because there's that curve right there, you could see the incoming car. So for some reason, I got, something told me to look at the rear view mirror, and I saw it coming and I braced myself. And I walked out of there with just a simple whiplash. The miracle and all of that was that I was not wearing my seatbelt. Mm -hmm. Because it was just down the street. I was like, oh, I'll just go, 
quick, come back, no big deal. And that happened. And that still wasn't enough here to wake me up. That God was trying to tell me I'm saving your life here because there's a reason why. I kind of see it now. Yeah. Well, I do, I'm kind of see I do see it now. But I'm saving your life. You have a reason. You have a purpose. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't, do, to get, don't dwell into the point where you want to commit suicide because I did. You know, depression does that here. And there was this pastor, 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 pastor from the First Christian Church then at the time. His name was Pastor Phil. I don't know if you guys knew him or not here. Uh, he did honeybees and stuff like that. And he came into the restaurant, my mom, and my mom asked him to come and see me. So I get a knock on my door. And he, he uh, saw that everything was dark and stuff like that. He saw that I had a guitar. I didn't know how to play the guitar then. I was still learning. Uh, the basic, uh, your basic chords, and then he's, he checked on me real quick. He didn't preach the Bible, didn't preach God's work or anything like that. He said, I'll be right back, because he knows I wasn't eating either, so he went and grabbed some honey, some graham crackers for me to eat, and he brought his, he brought his mandolin, for those who know Phil, uh, he plays the mandolin, he's a really good mandolin player, and then taught me my first song on the guitar, and it was Amazing Grace. And his grace is amazing. Save the wretch like me, you know? And that's how, that was my first calling to worship. That's the reason, that was the catalyst for all of this years. Mm -hmm. And how one man who loved you so much here, unconditionally, no matter what, to bring God's words into your life, whether it was through the, the message here or through God's music here. And that's what lifted me up and eventually got me back walking on my two feet again and then uh, I eventually opened my first restaurant Eureka Springs here but that was a big humility thing for me here because I thought I was all that you know I made it all by myself and still and um, it was a complete failure, long story short. What I did, I decided to, you know, go ahead and use God's uh, tools and use it to my advantage here. Um, I did Bible quotes on receipts, you know, on the bottom of it here. I decided to play Christian music in the restaurant here. And then eventually that led to the LGBT community against me. Even though I have nothing against gay people or stuff like that here, I understand that's your choice. I still love you. I tell you what the Bible says, but this is where I personally stand. But nonetheless, I still love you, no matter what. That I didn't get through very well with some of the community here. And a long story short, that business failed where I used Christianity for my personal selfish ambitions. And uh, that eventually led to the failure of that to the point where I opened Ozark Fried Chicken with my mom and them again and did the sushi there. Some of you have seen that schizophrenic concept. In fact, that's how I met my wife, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, what happened during that time, I skipped my second marriage at that time. I'm not going to touch that one because really it's not much to say here besides I felt like she mean belated me using the Bible, because I thought she was a godly woman here. And uh, when you use the Bible to manipulate your own will, it defeats the own, its own purpose and stuff like that. But that's enough of that one right there, because uh, um, eventually what happened during that time, I came back to Couple Love, Chuck, and then just opened the ministry back up. I, and we were having service over there on the other side of the building here and um, started doing worship again, but I was lonely. I, I was very, very lonely. When you're lonely, it's hard, but I didn't want to go back. I knew what to do to make sure I don't fall into depression because I didn't have medication or anything like that. I really did it through sheer God's will. That's it. It was only God's will that got me out. I kid you not. <coughs> and uh, I didn't know it then. I do now, for sure. There's no way that I, I thought I could have done it on my own. 
But uh, I rem remember we had a prayer tree. And I think I told this story before here. And I put a prayer. I was like, you know, I don't know if that works. I am not going to lie to this day. God, I still don't know how he works. You know, but I was like, you know, it's not going to hurt to put that prayer tree up there. And I prayed that God would send me a God-fearing woman into my life here so I could, you know, do his will. And then one day, this lady came in with uh, her daughter and ordered a spicy crab roll. She's a very picky lady. She wanted spicy mayo extra on the side on top of it. I remember one time we forgot to give her the spicy mayo and she called back and complained about it. <laughs> and Nonetheless, the daughter, I knew who she was because they were regular Christmas of mine here. I was like, so I was like oh, I'm going to Facebook stalk her. <laughs> and then I found her eventually and I messaged her. And for those who know, I don't use Facebook as much, but those who do know that my name on Facebook is not Andy. It's under Norman Dell. And she's like, who's this Norman Dell character? He's young, you know? He looks young. He's like in his early 30s or something like that. She questions my sister-in-law, I mean, my, uh, her daughter. And they're like, oh yeah, Andy's a great guy, blah, 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 blah. They hyped me up, you know. <laughs> so much so that uh, eventually I was able to get her to come to our first date. And my first date was right here at Couple Love. And uh, that's, I usually have a story to follow up with that here. But uh, I'm not going to tell it because Judy doesn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> But um, uh, it's, it's, I started seeing then, this is only, what, two years, right? Three years? This is it two years? Three years. Oh, man, we, it feels like when you're in love and you have that unconditional partner with you, time is not non-existent. You don't even realize it. I, I, don't, I don't even realize it to this day. I'm just going with the flow. Uh, you, and what I mean by that is that we we, we are, it, it wasn't up until with Judy, I didn't never really, really dwelled into the Bible uh, to help correct my temperament. It's still bad, but I'm working on it, you know, even, even last night. <laughs> With our son, he's a, he's a, he's challenging at home, mm -hmm. and uh, but it's a good it's a good challenge because we could use Bible verses and stuff like that. I've never done that before, you know. Use the Bible to lead your family. Man, it works. Yeah. It does work. Even with my daughter right here, you know, we have our struggles here with her, and uh, we. It, to be, I, I, we basically, long story short, we submit to God's will. Not our will, God's will. Amen. And uh, we try not to make it about us anymore here. And if we get it, great. You know, but we know at the end of the day, God will always bless you. That's, I can promise that only from, uh, from what I've experienced here. But you have to know that God is here for you. All of us. And he's got you back. Amen. And you will not see it right now in your time, stuff like that. You will see it in his time. When the time is right, you'll be like, oh, that's where, that's what happened. And we are obedient bodies. I am not kidding you here. There's things there that's happened here that's been divine intervened. intervened and I'm just so blessed about that here. And we had a lot of stumbling blocks that we tried to circumvent and do things our way. One and um, so my uh, message to you would be in Numbers 22, uh, 20, and that was the story of Balaam. I, I didn't know the story until Judy told me this last night. The story of Balaam here is is Numbers in the in the Old Testament, and that's the one where angels were blocking the prophet Balaam from going into I, I was Israel. I forgot. But anyways, the donkey 
was being blocked by God's spirit and angels, stuff like that. And the donkey kept going that way. But Balaam was on top of the donkey, was whipping down. I'm going to go this way. Three times he did that here. And eventually God told him that that was me. You know, the, the donkey started talking through to Balaam through the, through the donkey. And it was just like a, a cool thing. A cool analogy for us, like how we want to try to go this way, but God's giving us the clues. Hey, no, I want you to go this way to protect you, stuff like that here. And uh, we, and we are still doing that to this day. We sub we we have to submit to God's will and not our will, how, no matter how bleak it is, you know. Um, and if anything, if I, uh, other things here I want to bring in here is like Matthew six fourteen. Uh, about for forgiveness here. You guys, I'm sure, are very familiar with the Lord's Prayer, you know. You know forgive, forgive those who persecute you, also like that here. Uh, that's a good one that I have for the forgiveness. He's the light of my life. That's John 8, 12. I didn't bring my Bible, so I don't have my notes on it here. But I, I'm just so blessed that I didn't give the whole, 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 whole testimony. Because I think it might be too long. I hope it's not long enough for you, Chuck. Yeah, you did good. Okay, good. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> to be continued, but I just appreciate you guys here. Like, you guys know that uh, I, I, I didn't show you, share all the bad, bad, bad things here. And nobody needs to hear that because that could be traumatizing to some people here. And uh, But uh, I've had a lot of bad things happen to me in Detroit here, gang-related stuff here. And uh, yeah, I'll leave that for another testimony. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was long. That was good. good. <laughs> Love you. Oh, well. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, that's it, man. Our testimonies. They help us out. It helps us to get rid of that junk that we're carrying around, and it helps other people see that what we went through can help them get through what they're going through. And Andy, he, uh, uh, I met Andy, me and Patty, we, um, and JR from uh, Soul Purpose, this pastor in um, out at Holiday Island, Joe, he um, wanted to completely change the, their music. And if you know anything about Baptists, they don't play the kind of music that we do. And um, he wanted us to do it, so we rolled in there and we did it. And um, man, it took about mm, I don't know five months of us struggling with everybody because if you go to a Baptist church they got a piano and some old lady singing and that's it and um, we walked in there and we rocked them and it was pretty crazy and luckily the pastor had come to realize it was a bad idea <laughs> so we said all right we're out of here and um, Anyways, so Andy's been my buddy ever since, and when we started Cup of Love, uh, he was the first one I called, and I was like, hey, man, let's put together some kind of praise and worship music, you know? And that's what we've been doing ever since. He was uh, faithful. I love you, brother. So, um, we are not, I'm, I'm saving this for another week. Man, I got like three sermons now. This is awesome. So I'm just going to keep on working on sermons. But um, so with that being said, I believe that Andy threw out enough scripture and that you should know Jesus and how he can take a guy like Andy and work miracles in his life and change him from who he was to who he is. And you just believe that in your heart, man. He can work miracles in your life, just like he said, man. I'm telling you, you just got to be obedient and want it. That's the main thing. You got to want it. You got to 
you know, it's like, for me, I was at the end of my rope, you know, I was like, I need something different, and somebody walked in and prayed with me, changed my whole life, and introduced me to Jesus, so that's what I had to do, I was looking, I was looking for something different, because I tried everything, so if that's you, and you are like tired of doing the same junk, same, you know, it's like, we're crazy people. We keep doing the same thing, expecting a different answer, and it's always the same answer every time, man. It's like, man, we never learn until we finally go, all right, enough is enough. I'm not going to do this anymore. And I'm telling you, when you give your life to Christ, it's going to be a struggle still. You're going to still have struggles every day. But man, is it so awesome to walk around and just, I, I pray from the time I get up till I go to sleep, man. Yep. All day long, man. Jesus is there with me. He's my buddy, man. I talk to him. You may think I'm crazy, but that's the way I roll. Yeah, bro. I just want to add also, and you always preached this from the beginning since I started here. Talk about God and Jesus throughout the day. Yeah. And I never did it then. And now I just, it's automatic. Yeah. It's automatic. Yeah. And it's really, really a... Mm -hmm. I mean, I was as skeptical about it. I thought y'all were just crazy. Yeah. You know? We are. But we are. Now I know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> no, but it's true. Talk about it every day. It's, yeah. it, it affects your... He, he has that Jesus thing quality about him. I don't know. But I always talk... We always talk about God. Yeah. Kids. Yeah. Every day. Anybody yeah. from kids, some friends, strangers, everybody. Yeah. Everybody here. Amen. I appreciate that, Chuck. I love it, brother. And um, so, that being said, you find some time. You open up your Bible. Open this word up. And just open it up. Just wherever it falls. That word's going to be for you. You just start reading. And you dig in. And, you know, if it's all confusing and everything... Some of them, this one doesn't have it, but get you a study Bible. Usually there's like stuff about this much at the bottom that is this person's, uh, whoever put their name on the Bible on the, didn't write the Bible, but they got their opinion about it. Yeah, some of them are pretty good. You got to be careful, you know, <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you, because some of them are going to steer you wrong and think that you're Superman and you've got all these crazy things that you, you aren't. We and, get that every day. Yes. And um, just take the time. Get yep. to know the Lord. Fall in love with your Bible. So, we're going to get together and eat, have some fellowship. Please stick around with us. And um, have have some, have a good time, man. I love you. Yes. Somebody in our family is having a 16th birthday uh -oh. tomorrow. Uh oh. I won't name names. No. But. <laughs> so so that, that's rhymes with Bella. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> well, let's sing her a happy birthday. Let's go. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Woohoo! Anybody else a good birthday? All right. So uh, we usually do um, testimonies, but man, I'm telling you, I am itching to get down the road. So we're going to... Get to having some fellowship and eating, man. And I love you guys. And sorry for the inconvenience being closed all week. But we will see you Sunday. We'll be open next Sunday and have church. And um, you guys that are volunteers, man, enjoy this time. Go fishing. Go kill something, you know, or whatever. And have a good time, you know. Spend some time with your family. And I love you all and thank you so much. And, um... If you haven't been here before, just kind of step out of the way and we flip this into a dining room real quick. And um, when we get done, 
if we got time, if there's stragglers still around, we're going to turn this back into church real quick if we could. So uh, I love y'all. We're going to close in prayer. Father God, we love you. We thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for this testimony. Uh, we love you so much. Go with us today. Everywhere we go, Father God, give us the strength to stand up and tell people about you, Lord, and not be ashamed or afraid. Father God, make us fearless, Lord, for you. And we love you, Lord. Bless the food that we're going to eat and the fellowship we're going to have. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. All right.